guys, Mike Anderson here with Living Motion Monograms and the 1% Solution. Hey, today's tutorial is actually straight from the mailbag. I got a question uh, just in where it said, I love Tools 3.0 disc and my clients are blown away by the 50 designs that are on the disc to choose from. I really want to get into using projectors for my monograms, but right now I am using a Gobo projector where I can print the design on overhead projector paper and cut it out. Uh, the question is, how do I resize your templates to work with my Gobo projector and print them out in the right size of 54 millimeters? Thank you for your help in advance. Okay, so uh, basically, first thing to do is kind of just, uh, what he's talking about here is um, our, like by uh, Gobo projectors by America DJ or Chave and stuff, where we're able to take designs, print them out on overhead projector paper, and actually insert them into the uh, unit itself. Another inexpensive way of doing uh, monograms using Gobos. Now, the first thing to do is actually find out what size. Uh, he says here it's 54 millimeters, uh, and, and for a lot of, uh, every one of them is going to be different. But uh, for example, here uh, on uh, NLFX's site, we've got the Icon LED uh, by ADJ. And uh, if we look at some of the specs, it's going to say, okay, so Gobo size, it's 54 millimeters. Yes. But the viewable size is 33 millimeters. So I'm just going to assume that, uh, you know, everyone's going to be different. That's why we really want you to be able to take a look at this and see what size we're going to be using. Uh, and because I'm going to show you guys how to make a template uh, to use for your particular gobo projector okay so we know that uh we've got 54 millimeters is the overall size that it can fit uh and then our viewable size is 33 millimeters so the first thing we're going to do we're going to do this in kind of three steps let's go ahead and start with our template uh and design that so we're going to go with a new file in photoshop here and under new file we want to change Go over here and change this from inches to millimeters because that's what we'll be working in. Uh, and we know that it's got to be 54 by 54 because we need a circle. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that perfect circle here in just a second. So 54 millimeters, hit OK. Now we've got our perfect circle here. OK, let's make this a little bit bigger. So we know this is 54 millimeters, but the catch is we need to have our viewable area. We need to figure out what our viewable area is gonna be. Now, the way we do that is gonna be to have, what'd we say? It was 54 millimeters and kind of take a peek here. Um, but the viewable size is 33. The viewable size is going to be what can actually be projected out of this projector and, and seen. So we don't want to go over the, the 33 um, that we know of. So what we have to do is find where that's going to be dead center. Um, let's see, 33, half of 33. Uh, God, we're going to be doing math now. This is not, this is not, this is not going well already, I can tell you that. Uh, 15, 16. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to get uh, right in letters now. So 16 and a half. Uh, first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and find the center of our, we're at 54 and half of that, 25, uh, 27. Oh, are we right here? Who knows? Let me zoom in here. Uh, another tip, a little control plus is going to let us zoom in here uh, and just make sure this is right. So half of 54 is going to be 25, 26, 27. So where's our 27? Oh, we're right on. Okay. So we've got 27 that way and let's go ahead. Um, oh, yeah. Let me show you how to do this too. In order to put in guide rulers, these don't actually get printed. This is just for when you're doing your design. First thing you want to do is actually have a ruler up here. And if you want to access your ruler, if it's not already there, then we can go up here to uh, uh, view, click on that and select our rulers. Just make sure that's checked off. Uh, the next thing you want to do is right click on the ruler itself and go ahead and select millimeters. So we've got the right dimensions. And then if you just click on the ruler itself and drag down, then that will give us a line that we can bring in. So that's going to be our center point. And as we zoom out by using the control and minus on your keyboard, you see that we've got perfectly dead center. All right. So <laughs> more math. This is where it comes in. So we know that 27 is going to be our uh, center point, and we need to actually find uh, half of 33, right? 
Yep, half of 33. So 16 and a half millimeters each direction. Um, and we're at 20. We're at 27 here. So 16. We got 10. All right. So let's go. We got 10 and a quarter. This way. And we also need another 16 and a half the other way. Uh, and we're at 27, so 37. All right, so 43 and a half. There we go. So now we've got our dimensions here. <laughs> now we've got to do it the other way as well. And the reason these guidelines are going to be so important is because I'm going to show you a little trick here in a second. Uh, these ones from our center point, exact same thing. Let's go ahead and go 10 from the top. And we've got 43 and a half. Forty two, forty three and a half. There we are. Okay. The reason why these guidelines are so important is because this little trick here. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a perfect circle and uh, uh, and do this. So off to the left side in our toolbar here, we've got our selector tool. Now it may look like this, like a rectangle. Uh, you can hold your uh, you know left click with your mouse and hold it down, uh, and it'll let you select elliptical. And if we go to the corner that we have here and drag it down. And come to our other corner and release. We've made a perfect circle and it's right inside of our guidelines. Uh, now, the next step is going to be come up to the top, hit our select button and just hit inverse as an option. That's going to select everything outside of that circle, which is what we really want. Um, what we want to do is just kind of make a mask. And uh, typically what I do is I try and find, I'll, I'll just do a color that's just a kind of a gray. Uh, it's still dark, but we want it to be slightly different than our monogram, just so we can see a difference. So I'm going to do a gray color. I'm going to come over to, the, to our toolbar and select our paint bucket. And let's go ahead and click that in the center. There we go. Okay, so now what we have is our template. It is the correct size. It's, it's 54 millimeters from left to right and uh, top to bottom. But our viewable area is also highlighted right here in the center. So our next step, let's go ahead and get rid of these lines by selecting our selector tool again and just click on it until they are gone. So we know we've got our, our little template here. Our next step, let's go ahead and make a background layer because we know we are going to design in black. So um, let's go to layer and hit new. Got our new layer here. Let's go background. And as we always do, we use black as our background in our designs because we just want it to block all light. We don't want it to show any type of round circle on the wall as much as possible. Um, so we select that. Let's go ahead and uh, unselect by clicking the eye icon here, uh, our other layer. Make sure we've got our background layer clicked and turn that black. Okay, now we can reactivate our, oh no, look, it's not showing up. Here's why is because we're working in layers here and, and the way what layers work is anything on the bottom is going to be covered by anything above it. So right now we've got our background layer, which is a solid black box. It's actually above our, uh, our masking, uh, template here. So if we just go to the right side and drag it down underneath it, boom, now it's in the background and we've got our, uh, template right here in front. So now we've got our template ready. Next step is gonna be your design. So which one are you gonna use? Let's go ahead and open up our tools master files here and find a uh, one of our designs. Let's see, which one? Let's go with one of the new ones here. Um, all right, how about 47? This will just show you how easy it is to do this. Okay, so we've got our monogram design open. First thing we want to do is we're going to be able to just go in here, uh, click on our names. Let's go ahead and change these uh, to, let's see, Thomas. Who is Thomas going to marry? 
Thomas and Tiffany. Now oh, they're too big. So let's hit control A, select all the text and go up to the top here. And we're gonna make this smaller. Now, if you highlight the text uh, font size, you can actually use the jog wheel on your mouse and just bring that down until we know it's gonna fit right about there. Okay, we're gonna reposition this, use our arrows. Another little tip here is if you hold down the shift key, you can actually use your arrows and it's gonna uh, take it more, uh, basically just take it a little bit faster than using the, our fine tool, which is just the up and down arrows. We got that positioned. Okay, so let's say we've made all the changes to this. First thing you wanna do, um, it's gonna be really easy. I want you to save your work, okay? Save as, don't just save it because it's gonna copy over your template 47. You don't wanna do that. So let's save as uh, a Photoshop file on our desktop and we're gonna name this uh, TNT. Monogram. So no matter what, we've got our work saved. Because the first thing you're gonna want to do is just send a you know send a proof to your clients, and make sure that they uh, like it before you do the rest of the work to get it the right size. And I'll make sure that's on our desktop. There we are. Okay. So now we've got that. Next step is gonna be that we're gonna we're actually gonna condense our. Uh, uh, flatten our layers and the way this works is um, we want to we actually don't want to copy our background um, and I'll show you why in a second it, it's not a it's not a big deal but it's, not, it's just not needed so a lot of times I'll take that out uh, under our text file here we can uh, one of two ways you can select that box uh, and just right click on it and you can say merge group okay if if these uh, are not if you're working and let's say these files, these are just not in a uh, folder, the way I have it here, whoops. Then what you can do is click on your top one, come down to your bottom one layer, and then if you hold down shift and just click the bottom one, it'll highlight all of those. Uh, but remember, just don't don't highlight the, the background itself, um, and then right click on these, and we're just gonna merge layers. All right, so now we got our layers merged, and what that does is allows us to uh, rasterize all the the details in this uh, monogram. Uh, the reason you want to do this is let me let me go back a step here to show you. Let's say if we wanted to resize this, so we've got everything in a in a folder, and you and if we we zoom in here, you can see our bevel and emboss that we have on this design. It's covering a little bit of the uh, the font itself, but it just adds a little depth to it, makes it look really nice. Now, if we were to hit Control and T and resize these files all together. Uh, you can do that by uh, holding down the shift key and dragging your corner. Because we know this is gonna be much smaller with a 54 millimeter slide. But now we've made this smaller. If I zoom in on that design, what happens? All right, so the reason we don't want to do it this way is because if you'll notice the text itself, uh, the bevel and emboss and any layer properties uh, that we're using here, uh, effects properties, are all going to stay the exact same. Just because you're making it smaller, the values are going to all stay the same. So if you make it smaller, then it's still going to have uh, just as much bevel and emboss, which takes over more of the font because it's just a smaller surface area. So you can either rasterize the layer or let's go back here and select our group and just merge the group. So now we've got just one text file. And now if I resize this, make it smaller. Now I zoom in, you're going to notice, let's find it. <laughs> Look at that font. It's still the exact same way that we designed it with the same bevel and same emboss. Uh, 
And if you ever want to go back a step, by the way, you can always hold down just control alt and Z. And that takes you back a step from what you just did. If you like resized or, or, or did any, uh, different effects. So, okay. So back to what we're doing here. So we've got, now we've got our monogram design. We've, uh, we've condensed the layers by merging them down into one little section. Um, we can uh, take out the background by just clicking the eye icon here. Um, let's go ahead and go to the top here, drag this section down. That's going to give us, put it into its own window. We can make the window a little smaller if we want. And then uh, control and your minus sign will also make that design just smaller. Um, doesn't affect the design, just makes your uh, image smaller in the window. And we've got our template here. So the next step we're going to do is click our, make sure we've got our monogram selected. Let's come down here to our the layer that we want to use, and we're just going to drag it over to our template. Whoa! <laughs> okay, we can close this out. <laughs> Let's make this, as you can see, uh, it's a little big. So... Again, we're going to hit control, our minus sign. Let's zoom out a little bit and we can see how big this thing is. Uh, and again, I want you guys to hit control and T again. That will bring up our transform option and that's going to let us resize this. Now, if you just grab a corner, it's going to let you go any direction and that's going to alter the way this looks. It's not going to hold your aspect ratio on, on your design and it, it's going to look a little funky. So if I go back and hit control T, I want you to hit shift and drag down our corner. And that will maintain that exact same look and just uh, control our aspect ratio on that design. Okay, the other corner, we're gonna break it down a little bit more. Now, if for any reason you're using a version of Photoshop, sometimes it's in reverse. If you hold down shift and drag it and you can still go up, down, left, right, and it's uh, kind of altering your image, uh, try just doing it without hitting the shift key. All right, so we've got this pretty small. We'll zoom back in by hitting Control and Plus. Um, let's go ahead and center this up into our design. And remember, if we need to, Control T again, and that will allow us to make adjustments to our size. Uh, and so one of the things is this, you know, keep in mind, this overall design from, from the left side to the right side here is 54 millimeters, but we knew from the start that we had to, we only had uh, an actual viewable area that we could work with uh, as we look back here of 33 millimeters. So we know that from, from this point to this point is 33 millimeters, and we know that this is going to show up once we print it out. Uh, so we've got our design done. Uh, our next step is how do we make, how do we print this out? Well, you can always just hit control P, uh, and that's going to give you a single image <laughs> right up here on the screen. Um, and, uh, which is nice. You can kind of recenter it, but I, sometimes I just think that's kind of a waste of paper. You've got overhead projector paper. A lot of times I, you know, when I was using overhead projector paper to do this, I want to use, uh, something that's got, uh, you know, I, I basically, I wanted to have backups on site. So I would make three or four different ones. Uh, and the easiest way to do this is let's go ahead and cancel this is we're going to create just kind of a new document. We've got our new one. We're going to change this to inches. And what is our page size? Well, it's eight, eight and a half by 11. We want it. The important thing is to keep the resolution exactly the same. So it should be 300 as well. Hit OK. So now that is our piece of paper that we're, you know, our overhead projector paper we're going to be printing on. Um, so we've got, let's have this here. And we're going to go back to our design here. Um, it's going to be one of, at this point, what you may want to do is if you select all the layers and right click, you can merge these layers now. Um, and then we're going to select our piece of paper here, bring it down. And now this is, we can go ahead and click our, our design, our template again. And the way this works is just grab the template and drag it onto the other layer. There's one. Let's uh, click that one again. And you can just drag it over. There's two. Let's click it again. And basically, we're just going to build our grid here. And however many you want to do just to have um, 
since we have the paper space itself. All right, so now we've got our printable sheet. And if I print this out, that's going to kick off. Uh, basically, you're going to see that we're going to have the exact dimensions we need. You can use this template for any one of your designs uh, in... Uh, just to make things easy, you can use any of the designs in the uh, tools disk uh, as long as you want to, you know, resize it. And I hope these tips have kind of helped you make and design your own templates. Uh, if you need help designing a template, just, you know, make sure you find us on the Facebook, our Facebook group. It's Living Motion Monograms. Ask to be a member. I'm going to make sure you're approved. Get in there. Ask the question. Hey, Mike, I need a template made for me. Uh, I'm using, you know, let me know what fixture that you're using. And then uh, let me know the size of the uh uh, the gobo itself that it has to be and it's going to remember tell me both numbers to let me know size it needs to be like 54 millimeters and the viewable area in this case 33 millimeters and that way i can make you one that you can use um, to get you started as well if you need some help with that i'd love to do that uh, and then i'll make it available for everybody who um, may be using the same fixtures uh, so i hope these tips have been very very helpful for you let's take a look at what it looks like Now, as we can see on our sheet here, we've got all six. They're gonna be the right size. We can cut those out. We just follow our gray pattern and lines on the outside and that should fit right in the uh, gobo holder itself. So um, if you guys have any questions, make sure you uh, leave questions in the comment section below. I hope these tips have really, really helped you out. If you like the video, uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Living Motion Monograms, because I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on tips and tricks to help you guys along the way. Uh, remember, the overall goal of this, I want you to be able to do this by yourself and be as creative as you possibly can in doing monograms. Uh, it may take step by step and we'll get you there, I promise. So uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Uh, take some time real quick though uh hit us up on the facebook page uh living motion monograms group and uh, make sure you're a member there we'll get you approved there if you just make a request uh also uh check out the one percent solution facebook page uh which is going to be geared more towards the performance side of all of this and living motion monograms is kind of more of the techie side uh for some of us uh some of us geeks so check it out hope you guys enjoy it let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and we'll see you guys on the next video Thank you.